In this video we're going to give you a quick tour around the Photoshop workspace and introduce you to the main um, elements of the workspace and what they do. Now the first um, part of the workspace you'll see is this ribbon um, up the top here. Now this is called the application menu or sometimes people call them um, the pull down menus. Now if you click on the um, various subsets you'll reveal a whole series of um, application options. Now some of these options you notice will have flyouts associated with them. The little arrow you can see to the side that opens up further um, functionality under that tool. Now you notice as well off to the side here um, there's a whole bunch of keyboard shortcuts that are listed now, as you um, become more familiar with the commonly used um, functions in Photoshop, you'll find yourself using these more and more. Um, now, the shortcuts um, in a Windows-based machine is usually activated by the Control plus a, a keyboard um, uh, numeric. Um, in this case, a new file is Control plus N. Now, in a Macintosh operating system, this would be the command key. Now, we can scroll through and see, and when we get to the sort of edit and image and, and so on, we can see that some of the functionality is greyed out. The reason for that is because the, the action or, or process that we're um, undertaking at the moment um, is not um, activating that tool. So really, only the um, functions that are activated are things that we can sort of access at this time. So we can see there's a, a bunch of um, operations through there. Now you can see here I've got the workspace um, open with a file of my favorite um, Riga robot radio. Now you can see here in the this top um, panel through here is a series of, of tabs and as we open more and more um, Photoshop files we can access and, and quickly um, switch between different open files through this um, series of tabs up the top of the workspace. Now off to the left here you can see um, a series of tool panels. Now like the um, application menu these tool panels as well, they have a series of flyouts. So sometimes I or other um, help um, or tutorial lessons will refer to a tool that's maybe not immediately visible um, from the sort of uh, headline um, tool panel, but it's probably just hidden underneath one of the other tools. And you can see a series of flyouts which are indicated by this arrow off to the side. Now you notice that as I scroll through and select the different tools um, in the control panel through here I get different modifiers for that tool. So for example in the pencil tool that I have at the moment I can select the size of the pencil, how it's going to work in normal mode and what opacity that that pencil will draw in. Okay, so for example, if we drew with a 26 pixel brush, or alternatively, we can bring that smaller and then we can draw with a smaller brush. So that's how the control panel works through here. Now, off to the side through here, you'll see there's a series of panels, or sometimes I refer to them as tool palettes. Now these are ways of um, modifying or editing or altering um, your workspace itself. Now the setout of the panels on the side um, can be customized um, to different styles of using Photoshop. There's a few presets on the top through here. You can see there's the essentials preset which kind of minimizes those panels to a small um, uh, label off to the side, so if we want to access the labors, lay, layers panel for example 
we click on that and it expands it off to the side. Now, I often like using the design um, workspace default and because mainly um, the uh, panels or tools that are opened up through the side are probably the most common tools that I'd use in an architectural application anyway. Now I can minimize um, the uh, icons off to the side through these little um, arrow keys off to the top. Now this saves you a little bit of um, acreage on the screen however generally speaking when you're learning the application or even your own preference I quite like having the palettes open so I can see where everything is and I can access it rather quickly. Um, you can um, change and customize your panels off to the side. You can see here the default is giving me um, the history palette which I can undock and put through there. It's also giving me the bridge palette through there. Now I generally don't use the bridge palette too much so I'm just going to close that panel off. But I do quite like the history panel so I'm going to dock this off to the right hand side with the rest of my panels. Now there's two ways I can do this. Now if I drag it to the side you can see it can create a new section. You can see the blue line between panel sections and if I release the mouse it will dock that history panel within the sort of panels I've got here. Now I can adjust the height and spacing of all of these if I want to to give myself a nice workspace through there. Now perhaps say I am not too interested in the info um, tab off to the side here. I can actually pull that out. I can make it its own thing or I can just collapse it off and make it go away. Now if I want to open new panels I can go through the application menu and I can show the new windows through here. So these are a whole bunch of uh, panels that I can open up. So for example if I wanted to um, open up the um, histogram panel it will then open up the histogram or the navigator as well. I can combine the two and perhaps I can even drag this. Now this time instead of creating a new panel I'm going to append the swatches and styles. So if I release that you can see the blue of the actual bar itself. Release that and then I can just navigate between those tabs. Now sometimes um, you, you while well, navigating um, through the workspace um, you can zoom in, zoom out but the um, I guess the easy to remember shortcut keys for zoom in and zoom out are the control minus to zoom out and control plus keys to zoom in. If I want to zoom to the extents of the image I go control and zero and if I want to pan I hold my shift key down and you can see my little hand and then I can pan excuse me from left to right. Okay, control zero and I minimize the space through there. Now Adobe has some brilliant um, help menus as well access through the help, Photoshop help. Now the only other thing is you're probably asking well where can I get my own version of Photoshop? Well you can um, use Photoshop um, in the labs at the School of Architecture but if you want your own um, you'll unfortunately have to buy a version. Um, Adobe don't provide um, free student versions of Photoshop but here's a few options where you can um, purchase um, software online and typically speaking um, an education version of um, Creative Suite Design Standard should set you back somewhere between $300 and $350.
So hopefully that gives you a reasonable overview of the workspace and if you stick around in the next video we're going to be scanning some images.